Today's adventure takes us on the Haunted Wassa walking tour. It is put on by the Wassa Paranormal Research Society. The Daniel Plummer Mansion was built in 1890. In 1972, the mansion was raised. It is believed that Daniel and his wife are still roaming around haunting the parking lot. On in to my parlor. Uh, my name is Daniel L. Plummer. I was born in New Hampshire in, on July 3rd, 1837. And I grew up on the East Coast and I decided to do a lot of studies and I finally focused my attention on being a surveyor and a uh, civil engineer. I saw opportunity in Wisconsin, so I left my hometown and came here in 1857 to do surveying course. Now, Wisconsin was very slim and habitated at the time. And we, I did most of the northern part of Wisconsin, a lot of surveying there. Wasta was uh, a village of 500 people when I got here. And I became very good friends with everyone here, and I really enjoyed living in Wausau. So I decided to stay here. Over the years, I uh, started several... The Yankee House Museum was built between 1900 and 1901. It was the most expensive home at that time, over $35,000. People still can smell Cyrus's pipe. The Wassa Club was built in 1901. It was the businessman's country club. Martha is the grieving ghost that was scorned by love and she hung herself. Um, they probably made their own moonshine, um, 
but they didn't want to get in trouble with the police. So anytime the police were going to raid the place, they would get tipped off somehow because they knew everybody. And they would take all their alcohol on their, on their bar that was on wheels and push it into a tunnel in the basement that was built specifically to hide their alcohol. So the cops would be coming, they'd push the alcohol bar, bar cart into the tunnel, shut the door, the police would come and check, and there's no alcohol here. They got away with it for a very long time. Um, the tunnel, it, it still exists today, but it is not usable. Both ends of it have been walled off with like cinder block. So the other, the other side of it, um, comes out into the basement of the building behind us, which um, I know it as the Wausau Pilot. You guys probably know it as Shepherd and Schaller. Um, so the Wausau Club ran for many, many years. A lot of you may have been here for weddings or um, different parties or events going on here. And uh, it ran as the Wausau Club until 2004. In 2004, it finally closed down. And that was a very lonely time for me. I was here all alone from 2004 to 2016, when the Wausau Museum of Contemporary Art moved in. So I'm very happy to have people back here to bother. <laughs> All right, so enough history. Um, my own personal story, like I said, I worked here. Um, I was one of the maids. I did a lot of the cleaning and serving at banquets. And um, I got to be good friends with one of the, one of the gentlemen who, who frequented the place. I'm not going to tell you which one because, you know, you don't keep that confidential. But I got to be friends with him. He was my favorite. Um, I guess I was kind of his favorite, too. And, you know, we would hang out. We would chat. Maybe even flirt a little. Maybe it flirted a little too much. Um, eventually, I gave him a key to my room up there in the West Wing. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have done that. But, you know, I really like this guy. He's, he's really sweet. But things finally took a turn for the worse when I realized one day that I was pregnant with his child. Yeah, and that was a tough conversation to have with him. Oh my. Um, so I went to him and explained that I was pregnant with his child. And he said, are you kidding me? Um, I don't want anything to do with you. I'm a married man. Please go away, leave me alone. I don't ever want to see you again. I was heartbroken. And I didn't know what to do. I was young, I was poor, I lived here and worked here. Um, I would see that man every day. I wouldn't be able to get away from seeing him, but he didn't want me. So I got to a point where I was desperate. I didn't really have much of a choice what else to do, so I hung myself in my, in my room in the West Wing. So my, my unborn baby and I um, died. And I've been haunting the place ever since. Um, like I said, in 19, or I'm sorry, in 2004 when they shut down, there were quite a few years where I was here alone, and oh my gosh, it was boring. Oh, nobody to bother, you know. So when the museum started, when the museum came in, I was so happy because there were people here again. Here's the part of the building that Martha lived in. Here's a photo of a window that just had a weird light, you never know. The Grand Theater. The original building was built in 1883. In 1927, the present Grand Theater was built. 1950 was the earliest haunted reports. They believe that four people who have died there haunt the building. The former Rogers Theater was a furniture store, a funeral home, then it was believed to be a brothel, and then it was a theater. We would build coffins at request. So the father and son opened their furniture store on 4th Street in 1874. That store was used until 1953, and then it was raised, and the new store was built on the same site, but it was operating there until 1990. And then one above. 
Um, the funeral home went on to become Marathon County's longest continually run business. In 1939, the house was sold, and it was possibly used as a brothel for a couple years, um, and then raised in the 1940s, and the current building was built. And it opened first as the Hollywood Theater, and then it went through a lot of name changes. It was the new Wassa Theater, and then just Wassa Theater. Um, and then the Rogers Theater, that closed after a couple of years, and then it opened again as Marcus Theater, which closed uh, like a year after that, and then it was the Fillmore. Fillmore only was here for a couple of years as well, and then it's been the Downtown Mission Church for a couple of years. Has, was anybody here when it was the St. Paul United Church of Christ was founded in 1863. Many buildings have been raised and erected on the site. Many investigations and witnesses of paranormal activity. Conversations heard in the schoolrooms when no one is present. Um, WPRS had their motion and vibration alarms go off in the lower level choir area hallway with no explanation. And on their EVPs, they caught uh, they caught three. Um, one they heard they they heard the name Bobby. Um, one saying, "I have the toy." And another one, they asked the question, do you have a message for the current pastor? And they responded with yes, but they didn't leave a message after that, so they just wanted them to know that they have a message for the pastor. Um, the current pastor here has a story that he told WPRS. A couple of years ago, he was transporting three metal kitchen carts loaded with food from the basement to the ground level exit. So he loaded two of them onto the elevator, because that's all he could fit, and he left the third one, so he was going to come back down and get it. And when he went back down to the basement for the third cart, it was gone. And he starts searching around the, the basement, and <coughs> thinking maybe it had rolled away, and it wasn't there, and so he couldn't figure it out, so he's, you know, just grasping, he's just, you know, going to all the different floors, wondering where it could be, and he found it. Um, on the third floor where the school rooms were, and there was nobody else in the building at the time, so he has no idea how the cart got up from the basement to the third floor. So we have one last location, it's back The Elks Club Lodge was built in 1923. Land has a lot of history and there's been a lot of hauntings.
branch of the Elks Club was formed in Wausau in 1892. <laughs> it started with 19 original members, and they were all prominent men here in Wausau. Um, it was the former site of the J.C. Clark residence, built in 1875, but Clark sold the home in 1884. Um, it was used as a residence by someone until 1905. It then became the Wausau Sanitarium, that was only open until about 1906, though. Um, so in 1914, the Elks purchased the home and used it as their lodge. But a fire damaged it in 1919, so they raised it in 1923 to make room for the current building. In 1924, the Elks, the current building was completed. It was designed in the commercial, the Chicago commercial style with a Tuscan motif. And all of the work the designing, the actual building of the building, the plumber, er, the plumbing, the decorating, everything was all done by Elks members. You can see them all in the picture on the that's being passed around right now. So some of the activity reported here. Um, an employee has reported a sense of foreboding when working late in his office. He felt as if he was being reprimanded, but there was no audible sound. Uh, a lodge historian was in the basement bowling alley and heard furniture being moved around in the banquet hall. When he was investigating the room, though, he found that it was untouched. Footsteps are often heard in the second floor ballroom, and employees are told, if you hear footsteps behind you, don't worry, he's okay. <laughs> One club member felt um, as he was <coughs> in the first floor bathroom, and he was walking across the lobby, he felt as if a force was trying to push him or lift him up. They have seen the apparition of a man in a white sports coat in the area where the original first floor bar was, seemingly demanding service. Uh, people are often drawn to the mirror above the, fire, the lobby fireplace. Um, cold spots are also recorded there. And so I'll, I'll point that mirror out when we go down the stairs. You won't be able to go in there because it looks like they have, a, they have something going on. Um, but the mirror is kind of tilted forward, so it does definitely draw people in because it's at a strange angle. Um, they captured orbs and photographs and strange lights on DVR camera footage in the upstairs lobby outside the ballroom, so where we are. Um, and they've heard the sounds of footsteps coming down the main staircase when nobody's present. They have seen an apparition of a, an arm and a hand near the staircase rail, um, on the staircase rail, near the antler room. They captured an image of a tall shadow leaning against the doorway to the antler room. And in a infrared photo taken from the ballroom, looking out into the lobby here in July of 2016, they saw a dark figure sitting on the couch. Um, they caught a photo of a quarter-sized ball of light in the kitchen area, and they caught two EVPs and one, it wouldn't quite be considered an EVP because it was just disembodied groans and growls. So they heard something. But Here are some photos I took at the Elk Lodge. I am by no means a paranormal expert. They're just photos that had weird occurrences in them, so in our mind it was something. Where the arrow was pointing, it looked like a noose to us. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell.